Perfect. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our May Community Coffee Hour. We're going to be talking today about promoting youth safety and well-being on social media and celebration of uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. We have a very special guest, Marcy Thornhill from College and Career for Youth today. So we are going to um, introduce her in just a couple of seconds. Um, I do want to give everybody the chance to use the chat box to do some introductions. So feel free to give us your name, your mentoring program, your role. If there's anything else that you wanna slip in there today because it's Wednesday and you're feeling a little feisty, feel, feel free. Um, and we will kind of just see who all is with us today um, at this community coffee hour. So if you are not familiar with Mentor Virginia, we are um, a statewide organization with the mission to foster quality mentoring relationships that empower, elevate, and encourage young people. And we do that through a variety of different services. We work with um, programs, mentees, mentors, and provide training. Uh, we have AmeriCorps VISTA services that help programs build capacity for mentoring. We do provide no-cost consulting services called technical assistance. And we have a national quality assessment tool called the National Quality Mentoring System that programs can use to assess how well they're aligning with national best practice standards in their program. So we do have a lovely team. I know at least I saw Cindy Montalvo on with us today. She's our AmeriCorps VISTA leader. We have Virginia Patterson, our executive director, Tashara Void, our AmeriCorps program director. I am Sarah Wilkinson, our programs manager, and we are actually currently in the process of hiring a new training and DEI manager. Um, so if there is anybody that might be interested or knows anybody who might be a great fit for that, um, we have some information that we can share later on about how to apply for that. We also have a wonderful team of consultants, and actually you might notice that there are a couple of new faces on here. Um, so James Harris is a brand new consultant with us. He's a licensed mental health professional, excited to work with programs specifically around mental health topics and kind of bringing that expertise to programs. We also um, have just welcomed Angela Patton from Girls for a Change to our consultant team. So she works with a mentoring program or she runs a mentoring program in Richmond that's very successful and works specifically with black girls. Um, so we're very excited to have her expertise on our team, um, she has done great work in the nonprofit development space. And so I know that she will bring a lot of great valuable expertise to mentoring programs in our state. Um, and then you might also notice Tiara Whitfield. She was um, on our team full time, but has transitioned to a consultant role with us. So she is also available to work with programs um, in her particular passions are in training and DEI. So we are excited for all the new faces um, and expertise that has joined our team within the last few weeks. So today's topic, as I mentioned, is promoting youth safety and well-being on social media. So just a quick reflection, thinking about what brought you to this meeting today, what you're hoping to get out of it. Do encourage you all to use the chat box um, to let us know what questions that you want to have answered today about youth and social media use or um, mental health and kind of all of those topics that are going to be kind of com coming together today as we have our conversation with Marcy. So feel free to put that in the chat and we will do our best to make sure that your questions get answered today. And then without further ado, I'm very excited to actually introduce Marcy Thornhill and, and pass the mic over to her. Um, so very quickly, um, Marcy Thornhill has always been motivated to teach and inspire others to work toward their goals. She educates and mentors youth and adults by assisting them in identifying their gifts, talents, but more importantly, their passions. Mrs. Thornhill has developed several programs that have adults and youth alike for the past 15 years. She does career coaching, college prep, mentorship, small business startup. Um, she understands the needs of a multi-generational workforce. So she's also the founder and CEO of College and Career for Youth, which is a 501c3 organization dedicated to serving the youth population that may not have access to educational and employment opportunities. Um, she is currently with the Virginia Information Technology Agency. She's an adjunct professor at VCU is an author, active member of her community. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and pass the mic over to um, Marcy Thornhill. Great, well, thank you. Thank you, Sarah, and good morning, everyone. I am very honored to be here. Um, as she stated, my name is Marcy Thornhill, founder and CEO of College and Career for Youth, also more intimately known as CACI. Uh, we are 501c3. We founded 15, maybe 17 years ago now. I'm here in Richmond out of a need to assist young people prepare for college. 
Um, real quick, my story, I didn't know the right way to go about it. I started the long way. I went to college, but I did it the hard way, um, not applying for grants and scholarships, not taking SATs. So I went the long way around to get to where I am. And so I wanted to help young people understand um, their options. Since that time, we have morphed into this all-inclusive youth advocacy program where we work with youth that are incarcerated, coming out of incarceration, homeless youth, those that are dealing with um, literacy issues. So we've partnered with over maybe three or 400 agencies over the years to help young people. Um, and if, during that time, we've been able to help over 5,000, believe it, 5,000 young people, whether it was in social media safety, um, homelessness, working with Flagler Housing and St. Joseph's Villa, working with the Department of Social Services. So we, we've we been able to bring and bridge the gaps between multiple um, organizations. And that's our goal is to bridge the gap and make sure that we're touching the young people. So today I want to focus on social media safety, which has been one of uh, my big pushes um, since probably pre-pandemic, definitely. Um, and I've been able to publish a book um, around social media safety to help young people and parents make sure our children are safe online. I mean, the reality is our kids are born plugged in. They're born attached to devices. They don't know a world without technology. So how do we as traditionalists and, and baby boomers and, and alike, how do we help navigate this space? And more importantly, how do we as mentors help our young people knowing that in some cases, our hands are a little tied how do we do that and be effective? So I want to um, spend a little time today talking about that. Um, I will put a disclaimer. I will be looking between screens um, because of technology, as we know. So you'll see my eyes look away every now and again, but it's okay. I'm still here. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, at the end, you'll have opportunity for questions, definitely your comments. I look for perspective. So we want to make this engaging. And we will also have a breakout activity. So um, let's just jump right in. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, let's get started. All right, so mentoring in the digital age, what does that look like? Now I have these little windows popping up over here, so let me move some things here. Okay, so today we're going to discuss a few things. We're going to look at post-pandemic. Um, as we know, our children were at home working and going to school. So what does it look like today? Are we post pandemic? In some cases we are, let's talk about that. Um, being mentally fit, um, dealing with the mental um, impact to our young people. I know we have some mental health experts here. So definitely you will understand um, where I'm going with this. Um, mentoring in just today's social world, our kids are plugged in. So how do we as mentors engage with them using those tools of the trade and being able to maintain healthy mentor-mentee relationships? So I want you to take a quick look at this video and I want you to just kind of reflect as we move into our, our presentation. Let me show you here. Can everyone hear that okay?
Satan can have more relevance to our lives and futures than the responsible and effective governance of the internet and digital technology. So as you look at that video, um, one of the things I want you to consider is it's important to explore the contribution that social media actually has on youth and making it able for mentors to connect with their young people today. Young people have grown up in a digital communication and their usage rates have reflected. So a few statistics. Uh, recent surveys show that social media and some digital communications use have increased by 90%. 90%. And it also found that young people ages 13 and 17, so this is our mid-teenage range, um, that they use social media, whether it's texting, 87%, the use of social media sites like Facebook, we know TikTok is a big one now, everyone wants to be TikTok famous, that's at, up at 77% usage by young people ages 13 to 17. Now, I would probably venture to challenge that number and think it was maybe a little higher, possibly. Um, and so with the digital media use on the rise, and with young people and adults alike. So we're, we're as guilty. What does that look like? Mentoring programs in particular are increasing in the position to have to develop policies that take into consideration the potential benefits and risk associated with social media. So this is our new normal. Our new new normal is what I like to call it is not just the use of social media but also the use of social media in our daily lives to live. Our young people use social media as a means to not just communicating, but it actually plays a huge role in their development and their perception of life. According to Common Sense Media, the use of social media, such as messaging or Facebook, Twitter, things of that nature, they, it has skyrocketed. However, there's some things to consider with the use of social media. For example, the law. As you're starting to mentor to your young people, and we find it all the time, we see the fights on social media, we see young people posting pictures that are not appropriate. We see a lot of activity. And I know for me as, as a mother, um, I often look at it and I just kind of, you know, tilt my head a little bit and I wonder, okay, what are they thinking? One of the things our young people don't understand is the law. And I'm not going to get into the codes, but very high level, some things that our children are posting is illegal. For example, if they choose to post a picture of themselves, maybe they're dressed um, really skim clothes, maybe they don't have on a top or whatever the case may be. While we say, well, it's their picture, they can post it. Actually, that's considered child pornography. And even if your mentee chooses to post a picture of themselves, it's still considered child pornography, which is illegal. At the same time, when you consider the law and sharing of posts, again, we kind of cringe when we consider um, such apps as I think there's something on um, Instagram where a lot of girls from Richmond in particular, they share and post pictures of themselves and they share through the schools. Um, real quick story, I had a young lady who reached out to me through Instagram because she saw someone post a picture. Um, what happened was the young lady was talking to her boyfriend, 10th grader, um, and she didn't have on clothes on FaceTime. And so she didn't have on the clothes and the boy took a picture, a screenshot of his girlfriend and posted it to Instagram, to this site. Before she got to school, it was all over the school. So I was called in as a social media expert along with law enforcement. Uh, we had to get some of the social media police because they do have a division um, in the police department that fo focus on social media to come in. And we had to do a lot of groundwork to fix this issue. It didn't take the picture away because you and I both know 
once you hit send, it's out there. The, the problem was the young man who posted it, now he has to go to court for distribution of child pornography, 10th grade. This is real and this happens more often than not. Also some things to consider are branding. How are our young people using social media to brand themselves, whether it's football, basketball, if they're into sports or arts, they can use social media for good. And then also consider that colleges and employers are also watching. I know as an employer, I often vet um, my new hires through social media. I look at their LinkedIn. I look at their their Facebook, their Instagram, um, see how they're tweeting. I do my research to understand what the character of the person. But for our mentees, a lot of times they don't understand that what they post does affect their reputation. And I know you've all heard it. It's my Facebook page. I can post what I want. It's my Instagram. It's mine. If they don't like it, they don't have to follow me. Not necessarily true because they've opened themselves up to the public. And because of that, everything is up for scrutiny. Okay. So when we consider social media and safety, I want you as you're having your conversations to reiterate the law, reiterate the impact to their personal brand. They may not see it today. And most times they don't. Um, another real quick story. And this is, this is really, really close to me. A young lady was having a disagreement on Instagram with someone and she posted a picture, a meme, and she called out the young lady's name and said she needed to have her, excuse my friend, butt whipped. She never posted a picture of the girl, but she mentioned it. That young lady saw the post and called the police and said, I feel that my life is being threatened because of this post. Ultimately, they both had to go to court. The young lady who made the post was getting her CNA. She was at, at one of the high schools here in Richmond. She was getting her CNA. She was at risk of not being able to get a medical license, not being able to get financial aid, not being able to go to medical school because it was going to be charged as a felony and you can't get financial aid or any funding. My point is that they don't understand their brand early on and the impacts it can have to them long term. So as you're having those conversations, consider that um, as you're talking to them about their career goals. Now, as we move forward into engaging in a post-pandemic world, the youth, especially those with social anxiety maybe and depression, they have a tendency, believe it or not, to spend more time online as a way to either reduce stress or have somewhat face-to-face -face contact with some of their friends. Um, when they're not engaging this way, it, it's traumatic because they, need, they have a need to connect. And when an individual is not engaging in the world in a healthy way, like interacting with others or managing um, social situations or even dealing with conflict, it actually increases their anxiety their level of hopelessness, um, depression. And we see that on the rise with a lot of young people who are acting out and crying out on social media because they're depressed and they're dealing with the anxieties that come across um, social media platforms. I mean, just imagine, just take a pause for a moment. You are a young person, your younger self, seeing a murder seeing a real time overdose. You're witnessing your friends fight. You're exposed to so much that mentally you're not developed enough as a young person to be able to, to take that and compartmentalize it, to analyze it and to come up with healthy ways to respond to it. So you internalize it. You're taking all of that toxic um, activity into your mind, your 14, 15 year old mind. Their brains are not fully developed. Studies have shown that brains don't fully develop until around age 21, 22, some I've seen 24. So imagine your 14 year old child 
witnessing this and what they could be thinking. How is it affecting them? So their mental fitness. Then I want you to also consider young people who may have some low lying um, mental deficiencies. Maybe they have an ADHD or ADD or whatever the case may be. They may have some mental deficiencies, which again will cause their interaction on social media to be much more toxic and dangerous if not addressed properly. This is especially true when you think about gaming, for example. Because of the gaming programs, the way they're created, they are created to reinforce the brain in a way that's exciting. So it stimulates the excitement in their brains. So when they're gaming, they get this, this euphoric feeling of excitement and interaction. But does it paint an unrealistic expectation of the world? Are they stepping out into social situations and social gatherings expecting that same fix, that same excitement? And if they don't receive that, how are they responding? As a, as a mentor, you probably experience young people who are gamers, who are tied to social media. They want to be TikTok famous, Instagram famous, but it comes at a cost. It comes at a cost. Those 30 seconds of fame, I see something that's popping up on my screen here. So those 30 seconds of fame, the need to get the likes, the emojis, the happy faces, the thumbs up, they're doing everything they can to get this attention. The 30 seconds of fame. Digital platforms are often an extension of their lives, believe it or not. If you ever really pay close attention to what they're looking at, you can almost sum up what a child is thinking. Um, I know some young people, they like to look at dance videos and music videos. Some look at some inspirational videos or they're following. Um, I, I can't think of the, the man's name right now who talks a lot about the earth and, and herbs and foods and things like that. I know that's something that my daughter follows a lot, but I'm always concerned because they also come with their own ideologies. And so you find young people who latch onto these things and they try to recreate to get that same level of fame and popularity. Now, the digital space also introduces other risks, a risk of bullying. Um, bullying by, by schoolmates, on their peers, um, sometimes friends, they sit in their neighborhood. And a lot of that bullying also leads to very toxic behaviors. Why is that? Well, one is because they're trying to overcompensate. If they've been bullied in the past for maybe not looking a certain way, dressing a certain way, um, maybe um, they're just different. You know, maybe the, like me growing up, I was the geek in my school, believe it or not. I was the weird girl with the big giant glasses. I still have them on a the day. Um, you know, I had the bow blouses. Um, I carried a briefcase in high school. Picture that. I went to George Whip High School. I carried a briefcase. Yes, I did. I was the weird girl. I had the penny and my penny loafers. So at that time, I could have been at risk for trying to fit in. And I would have seen other ways to do that on social media. But fortunately for us, for my generation, we didn't have any of that. So we kind of got past all of that and we didn't feel a need to conform as much as our young people do today. Now, the other consideration here, 30 seconds of fame, is how they waver. They jump from one look to another, from one fad to another. They're doing challenges and, and jumping on fences on skateboards and, and, you know, dumping ice water and, you know, just doing all, eating cinnamon. They're doing everything they can to become famous. Now, again, going back to your mentor role, as you're starting to engage with young people, consider how are you going to bring forward the message of good behavior versus bad behavior? Just pause for a second and think, how would I, as a mentor, address some of the behaviors that my mentee or our mentorship group may be exhibiting on social media? What do we do? 
how do we get in front of that? Um, I want you to consider kids who are prone to um, self-image issues, pay attention. It's not always just kids being kids. It's not always that they're going through puberty or they're just dealing with other things. I want you to really pay attention because in a blink of an eye, we can miss an opportunity to save or to course correct. So it requires a lot of work on the, on the part of the mentor, that's for sure. Um, I mentor a lot of young people at my church and the community. And when I tell you, I feel like I'm, I'm switching hats every 20 seconds to meet the needs of each young person. That's exactly what we're doing. So I want you to also consider your own mental health as well as the mentor and how you manage your emotions. I know um, a lot of young people, a lot of mentors and people in the mental health field, they talk about self-care. And I just want to pause here to encourage you as you're going through the process of mentoring young people, you consider your own self-care because it's very easy to absorb everything that they are presenting and everything that they are going through. It's very easy for us to do that. So I want you to consider that. Okay, um, let me see. I'm going to find a slide really quickly. Um, okay, something is stuck. Give me one second really quickly. Okay, it's not moving. Give me one second, Sarah. It's stuck. My mouse is stuck. Let me... Would you want to try to stop sharing and then reshare, perhaps? Yeah, let me do that. I apologize. Oh. Okay, let's see. I don't know what made it do that. Okay, I'm back. Um, it's not a true Zoom if there's not a technical difficulty, so. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay, can you see that? Yes. No? Okay. I don't know, I lost my picture. Can you see me? Um, you no, know, I just, we just see your name right now. Well, that is really very odd. <laughs> Give me one second. I apologize. We were just going so well. There you are. You're back. Okay. <laughs> it's strange. It's like it froze. <laughs> that was really very strange. Okay. Okay. All right. So I apologize for that, that little hiccup there. Okay, so as we continue to move forward, um, understanding that as we're mentoring in today's social world, we are mentors, we work with young people, we want to impact their lives. So the, the relationship between a mentor and a mentee is very unique. Um, and it has, of course, its own rewards and challenges. Now, youth mentoring relationships once were considered to be one-on-one -on -one relationships. Um, we've heard about big brothers, big sisters, organizations like that. Um, but we see more commonly now that some of the mental relationships are more activities um, in the community, um, at schools. You have groups and organizations such as yourselves that come together to mentor individuals and groups of young people. So the expanded use of social networking is going to produce some challenges for mentors. For example, should you friend your mentee on Facebook? That's, that's an interesting thought. Um, I, I work with college students and a lot of my students ask to do that. And my quick response is, I'm sorry, but no, I can't do that. Um, I keep the boundary in place. Um, but for LinkedIn, the answer is yes, because it's professional and they're students. So because you have a very... Um, volatile age range of 13 to say, I'm going to even say 24, I'm going to go that high. Um, you have to be careful as to how you engage with youth using social media. Many of today's youth use social media as their primary way of communicating, which is great. You can always connect with them, send them a DM um, and message them and it's great for updates, but it also can blur the boundaries a little bit. 
Um, if you have your mentees and they're jumping onto your Facebook page, they are watching you. They're looking at everything that you do and they want to be a little like you. So there's some things to do and possibly not do as you consider moving forward, working with your young people and engaging with them on social media. Um, one of the things I want to encourage you to do is create healthy boundaries. Um, we work with them in their comfort zone because they are comfortable there. Absolutely. We want to meet them where they're comfortable. I'm a firm believer in doing that. But when it comes to posting and liking posts and commenting on the posts, that's where you want to be a little cautious there. Um, I often laugh because my mother is on social media, my 80-year-old mother. And so she comments on my posts. <laughs> so um, I found it funny. But sometimes it's not appropriate because of things she'll say because I'm her daughter. Um, and so I just kind of cringe a little bit, but I just let it go. But for your young people, for your mentees, it's very different because you're in their private space now. It's like coming into their bedroom. You're there with them. You see everything they do, everything they say, what they're wearing, what their friends are saying and how they're responding. You're right there with them. You're in their space and they may not like that. So set those boundaries and model the healthy behaviors that you want to see. That's the second point. If you choose and opt to engage with your mentee on social media, that I want you to be mindful of your own social media presence. What does your brand look like? What do you say? How do you post? Are you out with your friends and you know, you're know you having a glass of wine? You think you're an adult? I can do that. It's a birthday party. Absolutely, you can. But now you're a mentor. What does that look like? How does that come across? Are you drinking? Are you partying? Are you turning up as the kids would say? How does that look? Okay. So you want to consider that. Um, you want to teach them how to respond. So this is another way you can help your mentee on social media. When they are bullied, there will be trolls on social media and attacks. So how do you teach them how to respond? Okay, so those are just a few things I wanted to touch on as you start to consider engaging in social media and utilizing a social network more than we would email that I want to make sure that if you're connected to them, what are some of the appropriate behaviors, because again that boundary is that line is so very thin and it's very easy for young people to cross over and become disrespectful. They can get very comfortable with you because they see you on social media outside of the mentoring space. They see you now. Oh, you're a person. Oh, you're cool. Oh, you like that music? Oh, we're cool. We're good here. So now you've become the buddy. It's kind of like the parent and the child. How do you parent without being the parent, the buddy? It's the same situation. Okay. All right, so I'm going to jump into an activity. So Sarah, this is where I need your help. We want to jump into this breakout activity. And I will put, I don't know how many we have on the call, but we can break it up evenly into rooms. And the purpose of this activity will be for you to know your mind and how you think. So this is going to be very interesting. So if you can break everyone out, let me give you the instructions first and you can break them out. And because we're virtual, I'm going to challenge you. I want you to select one person from your breakout group. That's going to be the scribe. Um, pen, pencil, crayon, marker, whatever you choose to use. You're going to have one person. The other members of your breakout group are going to be your Facebook group. So imagine in a Facebook chat group and you're chatting and I want you to take five minutes and I want you to design a custom backpack for your mentee. That's all the instructions you get. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. So I want you to break out into your groups. You have five minutes to create a custom backpack. I want to scribe, and then I would like one person to observe the interaction in your group. 
and then we'll come back and we'll debrief. So let's take five minutes to do. I think we had what five or seven minutes, Sarah. How many yeah. minutes? Yeah, oh. that's that works. Okay, great. Let's do that. All right, I'm creating the rooms now. Everybody should have the option to join a room. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, so how did we do? <laughs> I tell you, I was in a I was in a room and it was it was very interesting. So um, let's talk about the results really quickly. Um, I like one group to present on your approach. I like to hear your approach and um, your results. So who would like to present? I'll, I'll start with group three if um, nobody else is jumping up. Mm -hmm. And um, Marcy, thank you for your work out, outside the box here. I really appreciate all that you're doing um, in all these areas. It's uh, such a great, great work that you're doing. So I wanted to thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I was in group three and we had kind of a hard time getting rolling on exactly what you know we wanted uh, to do. So we needed more time, but we did put some, uh, some things together that we, we have a um, word backpack you know, that we put together some words because of the time factor. And some of the words that we are, the things that we would want our mentees to have in their backpack were carry your mentor with you uh, as that small, still voice inside you for advice and, 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 and support. So I thought that was a really good suggestion. Um, some other things we talked about was thinking before, uh, before you post something, don't just react to something but to think about it before you react. And um, another thing we talked about briefly was um, wrapping yourself in bubble wrap so that some of the comments and things bounce off of you and you don't internalize them. And those were the only things we had time to really um, to go through any more carefully. Awesome, awesome. I like that, I like the bubble wrap. Uh, who else would like to share? <laughs> Uh, I'll start. Good morning, Mrs. Thornhill. Thank you for sharing this morning. Good morning, Mr. Hall. Yeah, thank you. I had an awesome folks in my group. I didn't know if we titled our group, but it was Amanda, Daya, Michaela, and Michael. And uh, we started by each way we contribute to young people. We, so program specialist, program coordinator, mentor, recruiter, life coach, and mentor. We kind of all took our respective ingredients of how we serve and came up with the, the principles of empowerment agency and supporting and advocating for our young people to be successful how to navigate those choices and safeguarding with being intentional about who surrounds them and who's pouring into them and who they invest their time with and in terms of our design we started with perhaps just an outline of a young person with their notebook and pen kind of like guiding themselves with all these things rooted in them throughout their journey as they evolve into the best version of themselves so that's a all we had the time we had to cover but that's what we came up with <laughs> i like that oh this is so funny i can't wait till we get to the end anyone else like to share <laughs> so i love this i love 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 this so the reason for this exercise believe it or not it was um let me ask you a question did anyone actually draw a picture did anyone draw i can't see hands so um, you did. What did you draw a picture of? It was a vague remote person, like holding a book with what was supposed to be a pen. I won't even show you by by making y'all <laughs> laugh, but that's what it was supposed to be. <laughs> so, ironically, I've done this exercise before at VCU um, with my juniors and seniors, and they actually draw backpacks. And they designed the actual backpack. I love, love, love that you took the backpack as a metaphor for packing the tools for success. I love how you came up with the ideas for the bubble wrap. And I heard a compass in the group that I was in, a compass for guiding young people on the right path if they get lost or distracted to take them on the right direction. I love, love, love this. And this is a great tool to consider 
as you're mentoring your young people, what's in your backpack? What type of backpack of tools will you provide your mentee? But another purpose for this exercise is how your young people think and how you think and how and why you communicate the way you do. Fostering a healthy relationship with your mentee requires that you understand how you think and how they think and sometimes how you can collaborate. This slide is a lot of information and I'll share this later, I should send this, I'll email this, but this breaks down the different mindsets of thinkers. You have clarifiers, ideators, developers, and implementers. Your young people fall into one of these categories. So you may have one who needs a lot of information. You as a mentor may give them very high level because maybe you are the implementer. Maybe you jump in and make things happen for your mentee, but maybe your mentee is needing additional information to understand how to move forward. Maybe you create, come up with great ideas to do things, but maybe you don't execute as a mentor. You may be the, the idea person in your mentoring program, and you may need someone else to take your idea and bring it forward. The reason I share this is because when our young people are communicating with us on social media, I want you to listen to the language that they're using, the questions that they're asking. Are they looking for clarifying um, answers? Are they looking for just, hey, I don't have all day to do this. You get that, right? We don't want to do this. Can, can we just go ahead and do it and get it over with? Those may be your implementers. They may just want to jump in and make it happen. So this will help you to understand how you think and how they think and what where the gaps are, okay? And this, why does it matter? Because you're communicating through social media. You're communicating via text. You have 140 characters to get your message across. How do you do that effectively in a social space? By understanding how your young person thinks, what they're feeling, the empathy, empathizing with what's going on and being able to get through all the noise. There's a lot of noise around young people and get into the core of the message. What does that look like? So pause when you're, when you're communicating, take a moment and consider what exactly are they saying? What are they feeling? What is happening? Ask the deeper diving questions so that you can understand that way your response is on point, but it also helps them because they feel like you care. You're taking time out to, to understand their point of view, their perspective. It's not just about this is the program and the outline and the syllabus and we need to check these boxes. It's not that I'm the adult and you're the young person I know better, but do you? You know better from what you know, but maybe not for what they need. Understand their needs through how they think, how they feel, what they say, and what they don't say. Even on social media, sometimes it's a cry for help. Sometimes there's something else happening and they're angry. Find out what the cause is and not respond to the post, but what's behind the post. So I want you to understand what they're thinking. And then finally, um, to wrap up today, I want to talk to you real quickly about maintaining the relationship. They're plugged in. So how do you do that? One is take your time. Ease into the social media relationship. Don't just jump in as soon as you meet them and you've had your mentoring meeting. Next thing you know, they pull out their phone and they have an invite from Facebook to be friends. That's creepy. <laughs> To a young person, it's creepy. It's scary. Why do you want to be in my business? Why do you want to follow me? I don't know you like that. That's what they'll say. So take your time and establish that. Talk about it. Hey, are you on Facebook? Um, maybe we'll follow each other one day. Do you like this? Build some commonality. And then two, set the boundaries. And I can't, can't enforce this enough. You must have healthy boundaries and a timeline for your um, relationship and your collaboration on social media. Texting me at 6 a.m. is a no-no. Texting me at midnight is a no-no. However, it depends on the relationship. It depends on the needs of your mentee. If they're going through some challenging life situations and you say, text me before you do something, 
then maybe they're about to do something and they're texting you. So don't go back to, didn't I tell you not to? Maybe there's a need. So again, establish the relationship and the timeline based on the needs of your young person, based on the policies in your mentorship program. That way you can make sure that you're on the same level of understanding. Um, also the, the consistency and trust because digital media offers a lot of opportunities to engage and connect, but it does have some risks. You have risk of, of them overstepping. You have risk of mis, misconstruing relationship. For our young girls, it's very easy to get a crush on someone. For our young men, same thing. Very easy. I had a student do this to me. Um, I was um, substituting um, at a middle school. And this one student, you know, he kept coming to my desk. Then he pulled up a chair and sat beside my desk and he said, I just want to look at you. That was very uncomfortable for me as a substitute teacher slash mentor. So I had to really establish boundaries. You need to stay at your desk. This is inappropriate. You do not talk to me like that. And it is hurtful, but it has to happen. So you want to make sure that you set the boundaries, you build the trust by taking your time to talk to them and get to know them. And then you set expectations. This is the most critical piece. You want to let them know, if I see this behavior, I'm concerned for your safety. Um, this is how we're going to interact on social media. This is what I expect from you as a mentee. And this is what I will provide to you as your mentor, because it's not a one-sided relationship. So they need to know that you're going to be held accountable to a standard, just as you're holding them accountable to a standard. Set a standard for you both, mentor, mentee, relationship standard, side by side. Here are the things, the do's and don'ts for me. Here are the do's and don'ts for you. Let's talk about it together. Maybe you can adjust it together. What else should I add, mentee? What else would you like me to add? And they will tell you what they feel and listen, respect that. So, okay, that's a good point. I'm going to add that to my list of things to make sure I do to help you. Okay, that makes sense? All right. So what have we talked about today? We talked about we're in the world of a new, 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 new normal. <laughs> I say that a lot because, you know, people say, I want to get back to the way it used to be. It will not happen. I hate to say that. Um, it may get close, um, but I don't see us going back to pre-pandemic behaviors. We will, but we're going to be hesitant. We're going to put a toe in for a minute. We're going to be nervous and cautious, and we may pull back. The same thing with our young people. The same news that you see, they see. The same footage and scariness and numbers you see, they see. They are just um, analyzing it very differently from you. So talk about it. See what they feel about it. Um, mental fitness, again, looking at the, the signs, the triggers, what's going on. Don't disregard it as them just being introverted or they have a bad attitude or they'll be okay just in a bad mood today. Let's talk. Look at their mental fitness. Know the signs of inappropriate behavior um, on social media. Pay attention to that and talk about it and feel comfortable talking about it. If you see someone with a bathing suit on and they're doing something and twerking or whatever, yeah, I've said it. If they're doing that, that's not appropriate. Be okay tapping them on the shoulder and say, hey, I saw that. Let's talk about it. Don't chastise. Have a conversation. And then build a relationship. Understand how they think and how you think and how we can bridge the gap to understanding. I actually do a separate um, presentation, a separate uh, presentation on intergenerational communication, because believe it or not, there are reasons why different generations, other than age, why they communicate very differently. So understand how they think and how you think. Okay. All right. Well, that concludes uh, my presentation on social media. I think we have maybe a, one minute left. Um, if anyone has any questions or comments for me. 
Marcy, I do need to quickly launch a poll to pick the next coffee hour topic. So if oh. folks have questions, we can do that while we're also taking the poll. So I just launched that asking what we want to talk about during June's community coffee hour. There are some different options there, strategies for mentor retention, mentoring boys and young men, best practices and strategies for faith-based mentoring, and then inclusive mentoring in an era of don't say gay bills um, in honor of June being Pride Month. So let us know what you would like to talk about next month. And then if anybody has any final questions for Marcy, please do feel free to let us know. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. And it looks like we are next month gonna be talking about strategies for mentor retention. So it is 10 a.m. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us this morning. Thank you, Marcy, for your great presentation and conversation on social media. We'll send out some more information in the slides um, in the follow-up email. And if there are any, Marcy, am I able to share your email address if folks have follow-up questions? Or... Absolutely, yes. Perfect, okay. Well, everybody enjoy your Wednesday and we hope to see you next month for June's Community Coffee Hour. Thank you, thank you.